Unfortunately, there's still one glaring entry missing from this list, and it's Great Britain. As Tony Blair gets set to step down, it's obvious that they are in more trouble than ever before. According to the Daily Express in London, Islamic courts run according to Sharia law are now up and running in major cities across Great Britain. And they're issuing binding rulings on the Muslims who go there, essentially allowing them to turn their backs on the established English legal system. Wake up, Great Britain. This is the very definition of a slippery slope. It may be weddings and divorces now, but if you give these courts any kind of legitimacy, it'll be traffic tickets, then misdemeanors, and soon these kangaroo courts will be sentencing adulterous women to public stonings, and you won't be able to do a damn thing about it. France finally seems to have figured it out. Welcome, France. They've realized that the country is slipping away from them, and they've made a choice to do something about it. Britain. When will you do the same? Zudi Jasser, he is from the American Islamic Forum of Demo for Democracy and is a contributor to this program. Also, Mark Wallace is the communications director at the Freedom Association, an organization that advocates, uh, or, uh, that, uh, advocates for the rule of law in the UK. Mark, let me start with you. Everybody knows that this is going on, that it's there. Why isn't anybody standing up and trying to stop it in the UK? Well, I think you're absolutely right that it's, uh, it's always been a widespread assumption that uh, there's been a variety of uh, parallel legal systems being run, especially in the form of Sharia courts in Britain. Um, only recently has apparently been confirmed that these courts do exist. And unfortunately in Britain, for the last 30 or 40 years now, there has been quite a politically correct imperative, which I think, and I'm sure the Freedom Association thinks, uh, has stopped a lot of the media and stopped a lot of politicians bringing these kind of issues up. But you, and it's but, absolutely time now that we start considering this more strongly. But you, but you say that people really didn't know about it. The, I mean, these courts are registered as charities. I mean, so they, 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 they're, getting, they're getting government tax breaks. Uh, they are getting uh, help from the government and funding from the government. I mean, everybody knew these things were happening. Well, I think it's absolutely the case that these, uh, these charities that are apparently running these courts, and uh, I gather some of them also run through mosques that receive similar, similar tax breaks, um, they do seem to be running them under those auspices. I don't know to what extent it's been registered with the Charities Commission who uh, administer charities law in the UK, um, but it ought to have been clear, I think, from the preachings of various different uh, pretty yeah. radical clerics and who've been wrongly allowed to continue in the UK, the people who've preached against the British legal system uh, and forced Sharia to replace it. It should have been clear to everybody that this has been going on. It should have been investigated a long time ago. Okay. Zudi, um, I know that um, Muslims, uh, they'll look at uh, Sharia law and it is, you apply those principles to your own life, correct? Yes, I okay. mean, Sharia and, and, inspires my life. Okay, and, but it, it has been taken out of context in, in other countries. For instance, in Germany, um, a German judge has just decided that, that he could not uh, grant a divorce because of Sharia law, because this woman who was being abused was married in Morocco, and he said he had no right to take apart uh, uh, a marriage that was uh, made under Sharia law. This, this is why it's so important that we discuss these things publicly. We shed the light of day on it because I personally, you know, spiritual Sharia and how I pray, etc., Sharia is basically God's rules. But what makes Western society enlightened is the fact that I can choose to enter those with my wife equally or with my family equally, and it's not imposed by a coercive system. And unless in our democracies in the West, we start to shed the light of day on systems that are creeping in as incubators for Islamists and radicalism, where actually, if you look, for example, in Canada, where they tried to institute Sharia, they actually found that the biggest, most, the, the most effective voice against this coercive system was the women's movements, who actually spoke up and said, you know, we may want to apply Sharia in our life, but the system becomes so coercive where the imams, who are still stuck in the 15th century, don't know how to apply it to a pluralistic society, so, and they get stuck. Zudi, we're actually letting down, because in, in Minneapolis, um, it, the, the, the big community that is speaking out against Sharia law is, is the Somali group. Uh, I mean, they're, they're coming here and we're, it's, it's like we're letting these people down. They come, they come here for a better life. They don't want that oppressive lifestyle. And then all of a sudden, they find themselves in it in America or in Great Britain. Exactly. We are allowing our 
victim politics or the uh, politics of multiculturalism to, to counter the principles that established America, which is of religious freedom based on universal principles of humanitarianism that all religions have to live up to, our Supreme Court, our Supreme Court said that we can be free to practice our faith as long as it doesn't conflict with the values of society. And many Muslims like my family came here to seek those universal principles inconsistency with my faith of Islam and Sharia, but not 15th century Sharia uh, or separatist. So, Mark, um, British multiculturalism, I mean, you're in a, you're in a, you guys are entering a spooky phase in Great Britain. You're now starting to say that I can't teach the Holocaust in certain schools because it might, uh, it might disagree with what people are being taught at, uh, at school or at, at, at their home. Multiculturalism is, is planting very bad seeds, is it not? Absolutely, there's been a very corrosive process over the, uh, over the course of the multicultural, uh, the multicultural debate. The multicultural agenda has allowed really Western values of democracy, personal freedom, the rule of law, and equality under the law uh, to be corroded for some kind of fear of not treading on particular minorities' toes, which is absolutely wrong. I think it was absolutely right what your, uh, what your other guest just said. The fact is that people come to America, they come to Britain to enjoy the freedoms here, they come to enjoy the democracy, and they come to enjoy that prosperity. Mm. And uh, we can only serve those immigrants properly, we can only serve ourselves properly and fairly by saying you have to live under you know, a secular legal system. Okay. Mark Zudi, thank you very much. That's a real story tonight. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to read more about this or if you found a real story of your own you'd like to tell us about, please do so. Visit glenbeck.com and click on the real story button. We'll be back in a minute with the one and only Reverend Al Sharpton.